we're back down in that Webster, South Dakota country. And, you know, there's just so many lakes out here. A lot of small lakes, but, you know, the bigger lakes like Bitter Lake, Wabe, still fish pretty well. You know, Bitter Lake is just a walleye factory, you know, as far as eater fish. Then you've got Wabe, which is still really consistent. Lots of eater walleyes and just what you consider nice perch. But with the clear water, some of these tactics have really kind of evolved where sometimes it's not always just that run and gun style fishing. Sometimes you just got to set up in key spots at key times. And that's what we're going to do today. You know, you look up in northeastern and South Dakota here in this glacial lakes area, you know, we've got the non-meandering issues where some of the lakes are now off limits to the public. But when you look at the big scheme, the overall area, there's still way, way more bodies of water that you can fish in the you know, lakes that you can't. And so there's still some tremendous fishing. And obviously the water cycles have been dropping down. I would say that in a lot of cases, some of these fisheries might have peaked maybe five to 10 years ago as far as some of the small lakes. But if you look at the bigger lakes and the more established lakes, it's still one of the best areas around for jumbo perch. And so you look at the amount of options you have, and uh, that's what makes this area such a tremendous area for anglers is that you can go to Bitter, you can go to Wabe, and if those lakes aren't happening, there's so many different bodies of water around here that you can try. And so every time I come down here, you know, there's a lake fishing well somewhere. Those options are just tremendous. I think what makes Webster, South Dakota and the Glacial Lakes region of, of South Dakota such a unique area, you know, we have such a unique opportunity to not only target perch and walleyes, which in the Midwest is kind of the bread and butter when it comes to especially ice fishing, but we have tremendous lakes for, for other panfish species such as bluegills and crappies. We have, you know, countless options for smallmouth bass. And we also have, you know, great lakes that offer, you know, northern pike and, and even musky fishing as well. We just have a diversity of lakes that, that offer what I would say as tremendous fishing for just about every coveted species that, that is found in the Midwest. I really feel like that's kind of why I decided to, to settle here and call this place home is that the fishery and, and the number of lakes are, are just endless and you know the opportunities are always there. He's gonna thump it. Done deal here. This Look is a big that. perch here. You got one too? Yep. Boy, this one's digging. <laughs> oh, another nice perch. Is it? All right. Yeah, there's two more on the screen, and I think they're pretty aggressive. Look at how plump that one is, though. You can tell the time of year. You know, you're getting into late ice. Their bellies are just plump full of eggs. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there's a big perch here. Look at this. That is a chunk. Look at the. Look at how high the back comes up. Oh man. Yeah, just a just a gorgeous fish. Beautiful. I got into another one, Jason. <laughs> this is getting fun, right? We're having Gosh, are we having fun yet? They're digging too. I mean, they <laughs> it's almost like they're mad at you. You get so fat towards the end of the season, you think the scales on the bottoms of their bellies are going to split almost, you know? <laughs> you know, it's so typical in Wabe. You know, you can be out here all day and have a pretty tough time. When that sun gets low, you just have a half hour of craziness. So you got to get up early and stay out late. There we go. Oh, ho. these fish don't like to come off the bottom. Oh, I love how these fish fight. There's a nice perch. Oh, look at that. There, look at that. Just a, these fish are just, just nice fish. You're not gonna necessarily find that 14 inch perch on Wabe Lake so often, but just lots of nice quality fish. You know, they're, they're up to 10, 11, 12. 
13 inches. And there's more down there. You know, it's amazing how many times when we're on a perch bite where you get one fish that comes up on the screen and that fish will be really hard to catch. And you keep lifting that fish up, get that fish up off the bottom. Then all of a sudden, two, three, four more fish show up on the scene and that fish will bite. And so the competition is something not to overlook when you're perch fishing because when you get a pack of them down there and they're competing against themselves, you're going to catch fish. Here we go. <laughs> Always love perch that pull out drag. There's still a lot of ice out here. Look at that. Came off in the hole, but that. Look at the fins on that fish. It is beautiful perch. You can almost tell where we're at by just looking at them. We're in South Dakota. This area around Wabe Lake here in South Dakota has got a lot of fish just like this. You know, in this clear water, a lot of times, you know, we're lifting up these spoons, you know, three, four, five feet off the bottom, just trying to pull them in. These fish can see for a long ways. Drop it down in the mud, pound it and smack it in the mud and lift it up. And you're just trying to bring these fish to you. You know, when you're fishing up off the bottom, you know, those fish can see it a long ways. So a lot of times I like to use something that's got a little bit of flash. You know, in this really clear water, I love using a small flutter spoon to catch perch just because I think these fish can see it from such a far distance. You know, a lot of times I think these fish might be coming over from say 20, 30, 40 feet away. And you get that spoon up off the bottom and just get that, all that flash that comes off of a flutter spoon. You know, that's like ringing the dinner bell. You know, you can bring these fish in, and get them running. There we go. All right. So we like to see. He's a thumping. Oh, man, nice perch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just quality fish. Beautiful colors on them. Nice fat bellies on them this time of year. Oh, you got to love it. You know, typically we're tipping these spoons with just spikes, and the reason that we're using spikes is they're durable. Sometimes we'll even use a perch eye. You can use a minnow head, but you know, your fish are gonna come in spurts, and so when you catch a fish, you know, you wanna get right back down there as quick as you can, you know, where you might catch three or four fish out of that school because you know, if those fish leave, you're gonna have to find a new school or wait for a new school to come underneath you. And so, you know, you're just a matter of trying to extract as many fish out of that school as you can in a short amount of time. And so the less you have to rebate, the better. the wall on it. <laughs> yep, there we go. All right, that looks like a heavier fish. Yeah, nice fish. It's got me wrapped in the transducer right now. Couple times apparently. There we go. Walleye? Yep, nice walleye. All right. Just a good eater. <clears throat> you know, we're throwing back some pretty good eating, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, if we were fishing for supper, we wouldn't be hungry. Nope, just perfect eating size perch, eating size walleyes. Fish that would look good in grease. You know, Jason, this winter we've really had a, a surprising number of of nice eater walleyes, you know, fish in that 17 to, to 19 inch range. They're really, really common fish anymore, and, and that's really nice to see for the future of the fishery. Hey, Jason Mitchell here. I'm down here at Shields. You know, one of the hot rods for this season that we've spent the last couple of years developing is the new Dead Meat Series. Now, over the past 10 years, the Meat Stick Series has been one of the most popular rods in the entire ice industry. The reason being is you have a stiff backbone with a light tip. New for this year, we designed a different version that's basically designed for fishing outside. So it still has that sanded glass tip where you see that feather light tip that loads up into a really fast backbone. But the thing we changed on this rod is we increased the guide train. And so you need to see the larger diameter guides. Still extended the handle just for fishing outside. 
But this new rod action is just phenomenal if you love that meat stick design, but you want to fish outside where you're going to get ice on the line. You know, Jason, I think one thing that may be uh, important to talk about would be just strictly where we, we like to jig in the water column, especially when we're fishing for perch in particular on clear bodies of water. You know, a lot of times people relate perch fishing to, to sitting down there pounding the bottom or, or fishing, you know, right down in their faces. And so often I feel like that's, that's more of a shallow water dirty water you know a lot of times when we're fishing the sloughs in our area that's that's kind of the technique that we'll use but i feel like when we're fishing these really clear bodies of water you know you you want to fish up higher in the water column it seems like oftentimes you know i'm keeping my jig three to to five feet up off the bottom you know if you're running a, a vexlar that has an auto zoom feature you know I, i'm up towards the top of the auto zoom and a lot of times when those fish show up they're coming in from the sides, you know, and they're actually meeting me nearly at the top of that auto zoom. You know, when you're fishing clear water, I think if you use that to your advantage, that these fish are gonna be able to see from a lot further away and work that higher higher water column with your, with your bait, I, I think you're gonna see a lot more fish that way. I got one here too. Nice work, Jason. <laughs> Gotta like love a doubles double. and jumbos, huh? <laughs> yep. Oh, nice fish too. All right. Here we go. Look at this. There you go, buddy. Yeah. That is a plump perch. I just love the build on these fish. You know, sometimes these fish can be pretty aggressive too. You, know, you get perch that shoot up three, four feet off the bottom. That is good living. All right. I just dropped it right back down and got another one, Jason. All right. Keep them coming. You know, as, as we start off early ice, you know, earlier in the winter, we, we have some, say, murkiness to the water, so to speak, where in the fall you get the winds and, and the weeds dying off and, and the algae starts to, to turn a little bit. And so early ice throughout maybe midwinter, you know, we catch fish all hours of the day consistently. But then as the lake is, is ice capped and the winter progresses, there's just nothing coming in or going out of the lake to, to turn up any sort of sediment or create any sort of you know murkiness in our in our lakes. So especially Wabe and Bitter, the bigger lakes, throughout the later winter months, especially late ice, we really see a trend where you know this morning and evening bite becomes more and more of a, a factor. And you know that's that's the main reason is because there's just there's nothing to, to provide any sort of stain to the water. You, know, you look at Wabe Lake, it's been cycling for years or some years, you know, you'll have three or four really good years of fishing, then it'll slow down and then people kind of forget about it and get distracted by all these other lakes. But you know, over the years, it's just been a consistent fishery that produced a lot of great fishing over the years and it's just a good place if you just want to catch quality fish. All right, look at them down there. <laughs> oh yeah, look at there. Come up here. Look at them, I got more fish on the screen. Just gonna be a matter of getting her unhooked quick. Getting right back down. Nice perch. Nice perch. Try to get back down before they leave. These perch have what we call attention deficit disorder. You know, and that's the whole deal in this clear water is that sunrise, sunset, you know, these fish are cruising, they're moving, they're looking for a meal. Middle of the day, that sun gets high, and it's like these fish just lay down and quit moving. And so the strategy 
is you sit up in key areas where these fish move through and just wait them out because if you move around too much you can miss these fish or even spook them and so these fish can be a lot spookier too. So sometimes you're better off just drilling fewer holes in these key spots and letting the fish come to you. There's not an exact precise spot for these fish in the sense that you gotta look at these spots like a, like say the size of a football field where you just have these fish that are living in an area and a lot of times it might be a bowl, it might be the edge of a basin, it might be some type of an inside pocket where that soft bottom exists. Sometimes it might be a deep contour, you have that deep transition between that old shoreline and then that basin, but a lot of these spots for perch aren't necessarily exact structure in the sense that you just have to find edges and these areas are often big and so that's why it's so important in my mind to find these fish and get off by yourself because these fish are just cruising around, they're just swimming in basically in a circle in that area. It might be size of one football field, it might be the size of three football fields, it might be 300 fish, it might be 3,000 fish, but you just get in that zone where these fish are living and just getting that traffic of fish moving underneath you. And if you can find fish and be the first person to get on those fish, you're going to have a lot better fishing because as people gather around you, they're just disrupting those schools. So instead of having five or six fish swimming in a pack, now there's only three fish swimming in a pack because those fish were already caught. And as those fish get caught and you see that pressure, those schools get broken up, they become less and less competitive and that bite just drops off and finally you know those, that bite is over and so usually the person that finds a fish experiences the best fishing. Oh that fish just thumped it. Wow. <laughs> that was a strike. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, I love that. I never get tired. Look at that. Oh my. I'm going to pull the transducer off for this one. Look at that fish. Just dig. Have a good perch bite. This might be a walleye. Oh yeah, look at there. Look at that. There. These walleys are running right with these perch. This water is so clear, everything happens. Sunrise and sunset, but prime time. There we go. There we go. All right, that's a rod bender. Yeah, yeah, that one come shooting way up. You met me at the top of the auto zoom. <laughs> that is cool. I think it's another nice walleye if I was guessing. Oh yeah. Look at the way that fish just ate that bait. Jason, do you still have those forceps on your coat? Yeah, I do, here. Is it choked? Oh yeah, here. Yeah, he chowed that. Beautiful fish. That's a nice walleye. Yeah, you know, the last couple of years, Wabi has been fishing pretty good, you know, for perch and walleyes. I mean, this has been one of the better, most consistent bites in the area, hasn't it? We've been able to consistently come out here, fish mornings and evenings, um, capitalize on that short bite window that we do have, and, and uh, pretty much every day we're able to, to get on, on something, you know. Um, the walleyes are definitely a nice bonus. There's a fish. There we go. You know, so often with perch fishing, you know, a lot of anglers have this mentality that, you know, in order to catch perch, it's a search and destroy mission where you're drilling, you know, hundreds of holes and you're really, you know, covering water, breaking down water, and you're trying to find these, you know, stacked up schools of fish. And, uh, you know, we've been down on bodies of water where that was definitely the program, but, you know, in a lot of cases too, you know, you're better off being more precise and just drilling a handful of holes and waiting for those fish to move to you. 
know, especially when you get this clear water, you have these extreme feeding windows at morning and evening, low light periods, and a lot of times these fish are a lot spookier in this clear water as well. So if you get too aggressive and try to move around, it seems like you're just pushing the fish away from you. And the other thing you'll see is if a lot of people gather around you, that's gonna slow down the fishing too because that pressure just you know sends these fish off. And so a lot of times you're gonna have your best luck when you're by yourself.